नमस्ते वेलकम टू टुडे संवाद दिस इज योर होस्ट सुबेक शारिकनी इन दिस प्रोग्राम वी ट्राई टू कवर ऑल द सेक्टर्स एंड ट्राई टू टॉक एंड कम्युनिकेट विथ द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ ऑल सेक्टर सो इन दिस एपिसोड टुडे वी हैव अ रियली वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट विथ अस ही इज एफ यू रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ भूटान एंड नेपाल मिस्टर केन सिमिचू Today we're going to be uh, talking about FAO's role and uh, responsibilities towards Nepal, its uh, involvement. So we will know more about FAO's role and responsibilities during our conversation. Let's now let's welcome him. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Namaste. How have you been? I'm fine. Yes, uh -huh. I'm very happy to be here today. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So before entering into our topic, let's uh, have a little chat about you. Sure. Uh -huh. So as a representative of FAO for Bhutan and Nepal, so how is it really going? Oh, it's fantastic. You know, I love uh, working uh, in Nepal. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, the people in Nepal are very friendly. Mm -hmm. And I also like uh, living in uh, Kathmandu. It's mm -hmm. a very exciting city. Uh, Nepal is a country of rich cultural heritage. Yeah. Uh, the food is also uh, mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah. And as I said, the people are very friendly, welcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a great pleasure working in mm -hmm. this uh, beautiful country. So uh, you've been uh -huh. working in this field uh, for more than two decades. It's yes. been 26 uh -huh. years, I guess. Yes. So how's the experience? It's a very rewarding uh, experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it's uh, a job like no other because you get to live and work uh, in many different countries, yeah. uh, meet uh, you know uh, people from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. cultures, mm -hmm. and you uh, have an opportunity to contribute to the uh, uh, social and economic uh, development yeah. of the country that you're based in. So it's a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, job and experience, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. so uh, yes. Uh -huh. um, so talking about your experience, uh -huh. so, um, because of your work, uh, like you bring uh, smiles on many other people's face. So how was the feeling of uh, bringing smiles on some somebody's face? Yeah, it's quite uh, unforgettable, mm -hmm. and you know, because uh, when uh, someone comes up to you in a country that you're working mm -hmm. for, and you know, we are FAO, so we usually work with farmers. So mm -hmm. when you have a beneficiary or farmer coming up to you saying that uh, because of FAO support and interventions mm -hmm. that their life changed, that they were able to uh, improve their livelihood, that mm -hmm. they were able to for example, uh, send uh, their children to a better school or, you know, they were able to uh, fulfill, mm -hmm. you know, uh, their desires and dreams. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, I would say, you know, the most kind of unforgettable experience, you mm -hmm. know, and you always remember that. And that's a great source of inspiration and mm -hmm. encouragement. Mm -hmm. And when people are coming up to you and genuinely expressing their appreciation mm -hmm. and gratitude, mm -hmm. you can tell the difference, you know, mm -hmm. when people actually yeah. mean that. Uh, so that is probably the most rewarding uh, aspect of my job. Mm -hmm. So now we begin with the main topic uh -huh. of uh, today's episode. Sure. So uh -huh. it's about uh, Judaism uh -huh. and FAO's role. Uh -huh. So before talking about Judaism, I just uh -huh. want to know about FAO's role involvement in Nepal. Sure. So FAO, uh, which stands for the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, is a United Nations uh, technical or specialized agency, uh, which was established in 1945. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our headquarters in Rome, Italy, and mm -hmm. more than 190 uh, member states. Mm -hmm. So FAO commenced operations in Nepal in 1951. Mm -hmm. We were one of the first uh, United Nations uh, agencies mm -hmm. to start uh, activities uh, in Nepal. Mm -hmm. And since then, over seven decades, we have been uh, work, uh, supporting Nepal uh, in the areas of uh, food security, mm -hmm. agriculture and rural development, mm -hmm. uh, uh, natural resources management, and increasingly now nowadays on climate change uh, adaptation mm -hmm. and mitigation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a five-year country programming framework which is aligned with uh, government priorities and also the broader uh, cooperation framework of mm -hmm. the United Nations mm -hmm. system because as FAO we are part of the United Nations family okay. and system mm -hmm. and under the five-year country programming framework we have four priority areas that we work on. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is uh, agri-food systems transformation. The second one is 
is a food and nutrition security enhancement. Mm -hmm. The third, uh, climate uh, uh, resilient natural resources management, uh, disaster dis uh, risk reduction. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one, uh, inclusive and gender responsive uh, governance. Mm -hmm. So these are the areas that we work in and we are implementing a variety of policy support and technical assistance mm -hmm. and cooperation projects uh, in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I mentioned, um, one of our flagship interventions is a project called uh, BRCRN, mm -hmm. Building a Resilient Chiria Region in uh, Nepal. Mm -hmm. It's funded by the uh, Green Climate Fund, mm -hmm. which an, is an international climate um, uh, financing uh, fund. And uh, the objective of the project mm -hmm. uh, is to uh, promote uh, or uh, to build the capacity of community-based organizations on uh, climate resilient uh, forestry management, mm -hmm. uh, natural resources management, mm -hmm. also um, uh, supporting farmers to adopt climate resilient uh, 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 agricultural practices and technologies. Mm -hmm. So this project uh, is uh, uh, almost a $47 million project. Mm -hmm. It's be, uh, being implemented in the three provinces of uh, Koshi Bagma and uh, Madesh. Mm -hmm. uh, we work across 26 uh, river systems, uh, over 11 di districts, mm -hmm. more than 100 municipalities, mm -hmm. and working with over 1,000 community-based uh, organizations, uh, trying to, again, uh, support the uh, people uh, uh, in the Churia region, mm -hmm. uh, adapting uh, to and also mitigating the impacts of uh, climate change, uh, contributing to uh, restoring the environment, and also promoting these climate resilient uh, natural resource management uh, practices. So, as you mentioned, this uh, uh, project, uh, building a resilient to the region in Nepal project, yes. uh -huh. uh, this has been uh, like more important uh, mm -hmm. as we compare to other projects. Uh, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, this is a flagship project. Yes. So, um, how this project is been going on? How, how's the preparation? Is Yes, yes, it's a seven-year project mm -hmm. and uh, our role is to support the Ministry of Forest and Environment mm -hmm. uh, in implementing this project. So we are almost at halfway point and mm -hmm. uh, the, there were uh, a startup period mm -hmm. where we supported the government in preparing uh, critical ecosystems uh, restoration plans for the 26 uh, river systems mm -hmm. that we are supporting. So that work is uh, already complete and we are now uh, in uh, implementing uh, activities in the field. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the key activities that we are implementing is uh, farmer field schools on uh, climate resilient natural resources management. Mm -hmm. So we're training uh, uh, communities uh, in the Churia region uh, to adopt, uh, as I mentioned, climate resilient uh, agriculture practices and natural resource management practices. Mm -hmm. So that's one area. And also we are supporting working with community-based organizations mm -hmm. and also local organizations on conservation and also uh, uh, forestry, uh, climate resilient uh, forestry management uh, mm -hmm. practices. So mm -hmm. we're implementing uh, field interventions uh, in, in these areas. So uh, Nepal is a developing uh -huh. country. Yes. So how Nepal will be benefited with uh, this kind of project? Well, as you said, uh, Nepal uh, is uh, very vulnerable to the uh, impacts of climate change and also uh, disasters. So the objective of this project is really to strengthen capacities uh, in Nepal, in the Churia region, so people can better adapt uh, to and mitigate the uh, impacts of uh, climate change. So in uh, this project will have a very uh, is very beneficial mm -hmm. and relevant to uh, Nepal in that context that co the community would be able to implement uh, locally led uh, climate change uh, related adaptation uh, mitigation and uh, adaptation strategies and technologies so uh, as uh, the region experienced the uh, you know the greater impacts of climate change uh, the people in the Churia region uh, can better cope mm -hmm. with those impacts so in that sense it's extremely beneficial and uh, important mm -hmm. so we've been talking about Churia region uh -huh. but you know some audience they may mm -hmm. not know what mm -hmm. is Churia region and mm -hmm. what is it importance mm -hmm. so could you describe in your own words, like mm -hmm. what is Churia Reason and how, how it is important to in context of Nepal? 
Yeah, it's very important because, you know, the Churya Hills, it kind of uh, serves as a gateway between the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, upland uh, areas and the, the uh, you know, uh, low-lying uh, mm -hmm. areas. You know, it's, it's a watershed area. Mm -hmm. So it uh, provides a lot of uh, ecosystem services mm -hmm. and goods uh, for the people mm -hmm. uh, living uh, in the region, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of people who depend mm -hmm. uh, on the, these uh, uh, river systems that I talked about mm -hmm. uh, for their uh, livelihoods, mm -hmm. um, you know. And also in, from an environmental conservation and restoration point of view, uh, it's a very important, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. region. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of also, you know, uh, deforestation yeah. and also environmental degradation that mm -hmm. is affecting the Churia, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the range and the rivers. So, uh, you know, it's a very important, as mm -hmm. I said, kind of a gateway or a watershed area yeah. between the, uh, you know, upland uh, areas and the, the low-lying, uh, you know, uh, plains. Mm -hmm. And in, in that sense, it's also a very critical area for us to focus on. So the impacts, the climate change impact from the uh, upland areas mm -hmm. do not necessarily negatively affect the people uh, living in the downstream uh, areas. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> we, uh, as uh, Nepali, uh -huh. also know this uh, tourism is mm. very, very important for us to yeah. live, yes. mm -hmm, uh -huh. to survive. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so uh, you, earlier you mentioned uh, uh -huh. this uh, Green Climate Fund. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. So FAO is uh, one of the accredited agency of a Green Climate uh, Fund. Mm -hmm. So could you uh, talk uh, about, describe about role of FAOs in this um, fund? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Green Climate Fund is an international uh, fund that is, of course, set up to support uh, countries uh, to uh, better adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, and mitigate the impacts of climate change. And FAO is one of the is, uh, role is of that of an accredited entity. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, supervise the implementation uh, of the project. We make sure that the project is uh, implemented mm -hmm. uh, in line with the uh, objectives of the project, uh, that uh, the project is meeting its uh, targets in mm -hmm. terms of climate change adaptation and mitigation. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the project is implemented by the Ministry force and environment mm -hmm. so our role is to make sure mm -hmm. that the government is supported in the mm -hmm. implementation there is another role that we play in addition to being the accredited entity that mm -hmm. is that we also provide technical assistance mm -hmm. and, and support uh, for the implementation of the project to support the government primarily the ministry of uh, forest and environment, but we also work with uh, uh, stakeholders at the provincial level, municipal level, not just government, but also uh, communities. Uh, so again, it's our role is to provide technical assistance mm -hmm. and support to capacitate the people that we work with uh, for the implementation of the project. Mm -hmm. So as we are uh, talking about FAO's role, mm -hmm. so continuing that, mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate FAO's role in restoring tourism? Yes, well, I think FAO's role uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in restoring the, you know, ecosystem services mm -hmm. uh, in the Churia region is that uh, we hope that as an outcome of this project that uh, we can successfully, you know, uh, mitigate the mm -hmm. impacts of the negative impacts of mm -hmm. climate change in the uh, Churia region and better uh, restore the, you know, the mm -hmm. ecosystem services mm -hmm. that are, uh, have been damaged by mm -hmm. the negative impacts of climate change mm -hmm. and thereby also maintaining you know a kind of continuous supply of uh, environmental goods mm -hmm. uh, from the region to the people mm -hmm. in the area so that's one thing and the second point is to make sure that communities and the institutions and the people are kept better capacitated mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they have the the knowledge the skills and also you know the uh, interventions mm -hmm. uh, for them to better uh, adapt to the uh, impacts of climate change mm -hmm. so that's the you know what we are hoping for mm -hmm. talking about impact so mm -hmm. what kind of impact will be there to political communities yeah, so as I said, communities can, uh, you know, uh, protect, mm -hmm. uh, uh, better protect, uh, you know, uh, the uh, environment, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so they, they can better protect the environmental services 
uh, and goods that mm -hmm. uh, uh, that they depend on within the Churia region, mm -hmm. and also uh, as I the other aspect as I mentioned mm -hmm. is that through the you know climate resilient uh, and uh, natural resources management and also climate resilient agriculture practices, mm -hmm. they their livelihoods and income mm -hmm. uh, can be sustained mm -hmm. or uh, improved, and mm -hmm. the, you know uh, they would not be able to they would not be negatively affected mm -hmm. by the uh, impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. So if we talk about climate change, mm -hmm. climate is changing day by day. Yeah. So how will uh, we improve uh, this uh, pattern or how will be preventing us from, uh, you know, uh, getting more uh, challenges? How we will be preparing for this? Um, well, you know, the impacts of climate change are, you know, are, you know, what do you call it, uh, quite extensive mm -hmm. that, you know, in certain areas, so, you know, you might have, for example, uh, you know, increased pre precipitation, uh, that might uh, result in more flooding. Uh, so one of the some of the activities, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. under this project is to have, uh, you know, gullies and mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, uh, uh, river uh, strengthening, uh, uh, riverside banks so mm -hmm. to prevent uh, maybe flooding. So that could be some of the impacts. Mm -hmm. Another, you know, on the other side, it could also be, uh, you know, more uh, less rain or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, drought affecting the area. So the kind of the climate resilient or the drought tolerant uh, varieties mm -hmm. that we are also, uh, you know, introducing uh, under this project will help uh, farmers to cope, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if they have uh, uh, more, you know, climactic, uh, you know, increased frequency of climactic mm -hmm. events uh, as a result of climate change. Mm -hmm. So is the FAO representative uh -huh. for Bhutan and Nepal. Yeah. So What's the further planning of uh, FAOs uh, with Nepal's government? Well, uh, Nep uh, FAO works uh, in a, uh, you know, uh, a broad range of areas, as I mentioned, agriculture and rural development mm -hmm. and food security mm -hmm. and also um, uh, natural resources management. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping to continue uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. But some of the other uh, flagship initiatives that we are currently working on is to catalyze uh, investment for the agriculture sector. So is to support uh, Nepal in attracting more uh, investment for uh, Nepalese agricultural uh, commodities and businesses. Mm -hmm. So we have an initiative called the Hand in Hand Initiative, mm -hmm. which is kind of a matchmaking initiative mm -hmm. where we're supporting supporting uh, Nepal in developing mm -hmm. uh, investment plans for mm -hmm. very specific agricultural commodities and uh, helping to identify mm -hmm. uh, investors mm -hmm. who can uh, invest in these uh, uh, agri-investment plans. Mm -hmm. So that's one uh, initiative. And we are also putting a lot of emphasis on uh, digital uh, innovation because uh, uh, digital uh, tools and technologies uh, mm -hmm. have also great potential for application in the agriculture sector. So it can be the application of artificial intelligence, uh, it could also be blockchain, it could be also uh, drone and remote sensing technology, it could be increased use of uh, GIS, mm -hmm. uh, or it could be more uh, hydrophonics and greenhouses, mm -hmm. uh, pr protected precision farming, smart farming. So all of these kind of advanced uh, digital technology mm -hmm. uh, has a potential mm -hmm. to uh, improve agriculture production, productivity, and mm -hmm. efficiency. Mm -hmm. But it's also a way to bring back uh, young people mm -hmm. uh, into the agriculture sector. Uh, you see a lot of uh, 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 young people coming back mm -hmm. uh, to the agri agriculture sector uh, uh, and innovating in the fields of uh, agricultural digital innovation. So we have a, 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 a initiative called uh, a, a digital village initiative where we are trying to pilot uh, a series of these agricultural tools and technologies uh, mm -hmm. in uh, select locations uh, in Nepal. We're also supporting the government in developing a national agricultural digital strategy mm -hmm. and action plan. So these are some of the areas mm -hmm. that we hope to, uh, you know, further contribute mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in Nepal. Um, so if we talk about uh, two readers and again, uh -huh. yes, so yes. what kind of priorities, what priorities would you recommend to government of Nepal? for the protection of tourism. 
I think the government is already putting a lot of emphasis uh, for the protection of mm -hmm. the Churia region. No, there is a, a, a President Churia board that has been set up. There has been a master plan that has already been set up where they have identified more than 100 river systems. And mm -hmm. so the you know, government has already done a very good job of identifying the uh, priority uh, areas and intervention. So mm -hmm. our uh, Churia project is actually a, a, a piece of uh, of that intervention so we are already contributing to government priorities but mm -hmm. i think the major issue is that there is a financial gap mm -hmm. that the you know the resources required to mm -hmm. uh, comprehensively implement the mm -hmm. uh, the master plan mm -hmm. for the conservation of the churia region is lacking mm -hmm. so i think that is probably the biggest you mm -hmm. know uh, maybe you know a challenge yeah, but uh, you know, in terms of what uh, it needs to be done to mm -hmm. uh, protect uh, the you know uh, uh, Churia region mm -hmm. uh, and its precious ecosystems, uh, uh, goods and services, you know that it has already been uh, identified. Mm -hmm. uh, As you mentioned, there is issues of uh, financial mm -hmm. gap. Yeah. So, in your perception, yes. how will uh, this uh, financial gap uh, will be fulfilled? Uh, what kind of uh, steps should we take? Yes, I think what is required uh, to fill the gap is to have uh, increased uh, advocacy and, you know, to uh, advocate uh, mm -hmm. for the needs of uh, mountain communities and especially mm -hmm. countries that are vulnerable to the climate change mm -hmm. uh, and to uh, advocate for, uh, you know, special attention uh, and uh, the special needs of mountain countries and communities in international uh, forums. Mm -hmm. This actually is already uh, being uh, done to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the pleasure of the United Nations Secretary General actually mm -hmm. visiting Nepal uh, last year and he uh, also during his visit mm -hmm. he strongly advocated for the need of uh, countries, mountain communities and countries like Nepal uh, having more uh, prioritized you know access to mm -hmm. um, climate financing. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister of Nepal has, and also Nepalese leaders mm -hmm. uh, in international forums mm -hmm. such as the uh, a conference of parties at mm -hmm. the United Nations Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change, mm -hmm. uh, uh, COP28, uh, and also the upcoming COP29. In these international forums, mm -hmm. uh, leaders uh, of Nepal have also been very vocal mm -hmm. uh, in uh, requesting uh, for uh, more uh, financing to be allocated to Nepal mm -hmm. because Nepal is not contributing to, uh, you know, at a global scale, mm -hmm. ne Nepal is not a, co a contributor, uh, a significant contributor to mm -hmm. greenhouse gas emissions. But, you know, unfortunately, uh, it is really uh, experiencing mm -hmm. Uh, the negative, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. side effects of climate change. So mm -hmm. there should be more uh, uh, international mm -hmm. climate financing allocated for mm -hmm. countries like uh, uh, Nepal. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then also the other thing is that it's very important that uh, this uh, climate financing is also uh, directed uh, to support locally led uh, climate change adaptations mm -hmm. and solutions because Nepal has a very uh, varied uh, uh, agroecological climate and conditions. So uh, the conditions in the uh, mountains or the hills or the plains are, are quite different. So you need to have very um, uh, lo lo locally contextualized climate mm -hmm. change adaptation and mitigation mm -hmm. uh, strategies implemented. And for that, you need to build the capacities of local institutions and communities to uh, understand what are the, the, the risks of from climate change that might affect their environment, their economy, and the livelihoods. And then uh, for them to have, uh, you know, not just the financing, but also the governance mechanism and the technology and the know-how mm -hmm. uh, to uh, better plan and manage, uh, you know, uh, climate financing and then to uh, ultimately implement these uh, climate resilient uh, adaptation and mitigation strategies themselves. And that will bring more uh, ownership and sustainability. Mm -hmm. So we have reached uh, uh -huh. to last section of our conversation. Yes, so uh -huh. we are really impressed about, uh, you know, your uh, representation and your uh, leadership uh -huh. And also, uh, what kind of suggestion uh, would you mm -hmm. like to give to younger generation for tackling uh, climate change? 
Yeah, for the younger generation, I think it's already happening because I think uh, in Nepal, you know, it's a very young country with a, you know, uh, a substantive youth population. And I think the young people here are very active. It's already happening, but I think the young people need to um, uh, continue to advocate mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, you know, increased uh, 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 international support for climate change uh, adaptation, mm -hmm. uh, in, not just in international uh, forums, but in, you know, also within Nepal. So I think that they need to, uh, you know, create, uh, they can cre contribute to creating more awareness about mm -hmm. the impacts of climate change. Uh, uh, so I think it's already being done, but I think maybe not everyone is aware uh, about the impacts of climate change and how mm -hmm. it can actually affect, again, the environment, the economy, and the livelihoods mm -hmm. of the local communities that they live in. So mm -hmm. I think that's a role that the young people can mm -hmm. continue to play, mm -hmm. uh, that they can you know, contribute to awareness raising and sensitizing uh, people on the impacts of climate change, but also to request for more, uh, you know, uh, financing mm -hmm. to be uh, directed uh, to uh, for adaptation and mitigation strategies. But also, I think I would do want, uh, uh, I do hope that young people themselves can be more engaged and mm -hmm. involved uh, in this locally led climate change adaptation and mitigation that I was talking about, because it's actually their future. We are talking, it's their future and their environment and mm -hmm. their climate that uh, needs to be protected. Mm -hmm. And if we don't take the right uh, preparatory, you know, the adaptive mitigation actions now, mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, you know, the young people and their children, you know, and the future generation that mm -hmm. will actually suffer. So I think that they have a very important role to uh, play. Mm -hmm. Okay, lastly, uh -huh. we would like to give a message, a statement, uh -huh. any kind of messages um, to provincial uh, government or stakeholders or uh -huh. government of Nepal. No, I think the only message that I have is the message of appreciation. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, uh, you know, FAO, we have very strong collaboration and partnership uh, with the government. And, you know, this is a partnership, you know, with all of our projects. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, you know, our role mm -hmm. as FAO is really to support, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the government and also uh, uh, civil society, mm -hmm. society organizations. We also work with private sector, but mm -hmm. all the stakeholders in Nepal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, the only really message that I have is of appreciation and gratitude, mm -hmm. you know, and also to request for continued support uh, as we move forward with the uh, implementation of this project and other projects. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a partnership and uh, I have received a great, uh, you know, mm -hmm. support and commitment and dedication from uh, everyone mm -hmm. uh, from all of the government counterparts working uh, in this um, you know important project mm -hmm. you know the project was lo launched during COVID-19 mm -hmm. you know lo lo launched during uh, uh, lockdown so we had to uh, you know uh, initiate uh, activities during that very difficult period and of course uh, some people had to actually you know travel to the field mm -hmm. uh, to uh, start this project and mm -hmm. you know uh, so I'm very grateful that despite these very challenging mm -hmm. you know uh, conditions that uh, people were still very committed and dedicated uh, to the objectives of the project um, so I have only a sense of appreciation mm -hmm. so uh, if we talk about FU, mm -hmm. yes. FU is really expanding uh -huh. and uh, we are really impressed by your leadership Oh. And if we talk about FEO, it's uh, doing great job and best wishes for FEO and uh, your uh, commands. Thank you, thank you, mm -hmm. uh -huh. thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me today. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Today we had a guest, a very special guest. He is a FEO representative of Bhutan and Nepal, Mr. Ken Simizu. So we talk a lot about tourism, FAO's role and responsibilities. So for today, this month, we will talk with another guest in another episode for today. Thank you.